Welcome and what's going on everybody. We are looking at the S&P 500 and after what we've now seen is the majority of earnings out of the way for this week. We can start to talk about the reactions that the market has made and some of the charts. So what we're going to do here in this video is we're going to talk about the market. We're going to talk about what's coming, some data, uh, some sentiment data that I want to dive into, which is like we, the, the, a lot of the core of what we kind of focus on because that kind of got, goes a little bit deeper than the charts. And it gives us a little bit of an understanding to some degree of the charts. And then what I want to do is look at a couple different stocks that have report earnings this week. If you have any stocks you want us to cover, leave them in the comments down below. We'll add them to a list and we will cover them in this weekend's video. So let us dive right on in. The S&P, we have marked a couple levels. If I start to zoom in here on this, on SPX, what you'll see is that we've got this zone right here as a gap up zone from the 28th to the 29th of March. And that was a spot that, hey, if we started to break down below this line right here, which was our lows of early April, started to say that could be a spot that the market may target. If we zoom out, you look at the volume profile on the right-hand side, that would be right into where we start to see a lot of volume, kind of a volume shelf, and where we could see a potential area of support develop as maybe some price discovery through or price filling through some of this empty volume space. It's a guide by no means. Is it something that, you know, end all be all, but it's useful. So that was a thought process. And after Wednesday, you know, it's kind of like, okay, this might be what we're doing here. Guess what? Market says, uh-uh, we're not doing that. We're going right back up. So the chop that we kind of were dealing with the past like two weeks has essentially just expanded. So we took this chop that was going on in, you know, pretty tight ranges and now just expanded that and had some good range days, like good trending days up or down to start the week, really. And then up so far on Thursday that essentially regained like the majority of that, which is pretty impressive. Now, to some degree, there's a little bit of meta earnings that maybe could have sparked that. But it's interesting because the market kind of does what it wants to do. Well, yes, it's influenced by this. You look back at some of the moves of this week. If I go to the one hour chart, well, this move down, a lot of this move down was sparked and influenced to some degree by the earnings that we had on Microsoft. And a lot of that was Microsoft selling off and then earnings and then it fell off even further. But Microsoft actually went up. So it's funny because Microsoft did this, right? But the market did this. Now the market a day later rebounds back and does this as Meta also kind of came in pretty strong as well. So it's not as easy as, oh, well, because earnings were great, markets should go up. It's not as easy as, as you think sometimes, okay? So that's a wrap. We've got Amazon out the way. We'll look at those charts in a second here. And we've got Apple next week. So the, the next biggest or the biggest stock in the S&P by weight is, is next week. So that'll be important to watch. That's the deal. So before we dive into sentiment, Really quick, this platform we're using here is TradingView. If you want to check out TradingView and Lux, Algo, and Param both up to get some of these custom indicators on your charts, those links will be linked up down below in the video description box. I figured I mentioned that now, and then we'll dive into AAII. So what this is, is now telling us week ending 426. So this takes into account what happened on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this past week, the data comes out then on Thursday, okay? And when I say it takes into account, it's taking into account the change in sentiment by those who are answering this survey, okay? Who are filling out this survey. And what we just saw was a shift from 27% bullish to 24, and a shift up from 35% bearish to 38. And to be honest, neutral stayed fairly consistent. So... What that does when you go back to those charts is what it tells me is we saw this, right? A little bit of this downside, not a ton, right? Zoom out, right? This is not like, oh my gosh, we're dumping, you know, five plus percent on the S&P. No, no, no. Not a big move. Just two days. Two days all it took to wipe away, you know, or to, to shift the sentiment back to now the lowest bullish sentiment we've seen this month and the highest bearish sentiment we've seen this month. So it's just, you know, it's it seems like to some degree, now of course, this is a small, you know, piece this week, right, as an example, but it seems like the pendulum kind of shifts and it's very easy to influence market participants right now 
who go from feeling maybe optimistic to, oh, we're selling off. Nope, nope, nope. You know, short. I got to go short or get out of my longs. I'm, I'm not bullish anymore. That seems like that's the problem in terms of extension of downside. Now, why do I say that? Well, if you go back and you look at the fear and greed index over the past year, what you'll note is that every time we get up into this greed or extreme greed or really extend up there, like 65 plus on the fear and greed index right here, you'll note that those actually line up with some of the recent relative market tops, okay? And then these dips down line up with a lot of, or at least close to some of the relative lows in the market, right? And so you pair up sentiment from fear and greed and from the AAII survey, and you start to think that we still have a decent amount of socked in bearish sentiment. That doesn't seem to be going anywhere, right? And it's not super surprising, right? It makes a lot of fundamental sense. We seem to be headed for a recession. The question is, how bad? That's the question. If I can tell you how bad it was going to be, right? then wouldn't, what's the point of these videos? What's the point of following the market? What's the point of any of this stuff? We don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. No one does. So when we get down into the sentiment deal, I think it's really interesting to see how quickly this can shift. Now, is it down to the highest bearish and the lowest bullish sentiment we have seen over the past year? No. It's gone sub 20% bullish and it's gone higher bearish. But these are still pretty skewed towards the bears, right? And when you look at the charts, this is kind of how you would think it would make sense, right? Like, wouldn't it make more sense to have more bears up towards relative highs when the market gets overextended to some degree and more bulls down towards relative lows? Yes, it would. But that's not how market psychology works. You actually see a lot more bulls up near these highs and you see the fear and greed get overextended up near these highs, and you see a lot more bears down towards these lows, and the fear and greed go down to very, very low levels. This October level on the fear and greed, I mean, this is pretty impressive. Actually, late September, October, we went down sub 20. We actually, I think at one point, were like sub 10, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it's pretty impressive numbers. Yeah, we had a four back in May of 2022. I mean, this is pretty nuts to see that. So, from a sentiment perspective, we are still not able to shake a lot of the bears. And why that concerns me in, in a way is because the majority of people, that tells me is that the majority of people, if you had to kind of ask a crowd of 100 people who follow the markets, out of that crowd of 100, you've got more people who are net bearish, whether they're acting upon that or not, they don't have to be acting upon it, they could be holding cash. So what's the scenario or what happens if... Again, you get days like this that potentially squeeze some shorts or potentially rip higher and set up a bigger squeeze. Are, is that when you're going to get that shift towards bears shifting over and we're seeing a clear shift towards a higher percentage of bulls? That would start to get us to that point where now we could start thinking about, okay, sentiment is telling us you've got a lot more bulls and bears. This could be a time to want to trim, want to sell, or dare we say hedge or go short the market based off of prior history. But we're just not getting that. And that's why I think this is a such an interesting and intriguing period of time in the market because while you look around on social media and you'll see bears say bulls are max long, everyone's long, the data just doesn't say that. The data just doesn't, some the sentiment data just does not say that. And so, but does it say that bulls are taking control and bears are like, it's max bearish? No, it's kind of in between. We're kind of in between. And so we got this weird dynamic where the market's building these higher lows and we have this like push and pull from a sentiment perspective. We may just be in this trending market that might not be super exciting, but it might just kind of inch higher, then pull back, inch higher, then pull back, and just trend up. As of right now, that's the deal. We have to close this week, and we'll see what comes on Friday. But if we close below 4070 down towards this low, I would like the short side a lot more, and this gap fill becomes a lot more potentially likely. 
If we push up and dare we say close over 4,200, which is not impossible, but that would be pretty tough to do in one day. We close up towards that level. Potential break over 4,200 could be looming. Now, next week, we've got the Fed meeting, May 3rd. We've got Apple reporting earnings. So we got some stuff coming out. Don't get me wrong uh, next week. But that said, let's look at some of those charts. So pull up Amazon first. Amazon reported earnings this afternoon. And the reaction off of Amazon was initially positive. Now it's coming right back down and Amazon's barely even up. So if you were playing a straddle or a strangle or you were long, you know, you're kind of thinking to yourself, huh, you know, because the problem when it comes to options with these stocks is that if you're doing that and playing that game going into an earnings, you know, and we get the big reaction, you get excited. That's great. But it's still got to hold up there before the next day. And if it doesn't, which obviously it's not doing, that's concerning. So we'll have to watch that closely. Uh, Amazon, if I go to the four hour chart, you can see the big wick to the new to a new high for the year. It broke up to that level around 117 back here on the earnings in Feb, early Feb. Uh, it popped over 120, one over 122 actually. And then now it's pulling back. It's trending higher, but if we break down underneath, let's say this higher low around 102, this level right here, that would be an area of concern to watch for rolling over to the downside on Amazon. Now, the reason why I mentioned Amazon first though is because it actually doesn't have as big of a correlation to the S&P as you may think. Now, it doesn't have a large weight compared to like Microsoft and Apple, not nearly as large of a weight. But if you go back in time on Amazon, what do you notice? Amazon actually, in the October lows that we saw in the market, Amazon was actually right here. Amazon was at around 106 or so. And it didn't bottom until December down around 81 or so dollars, 81, 82 bucks. So while the market put in its bottom and started to kind of rebound from there, that's what SPY did, Amazon actually trended lower for months. So Amazon's not the perfect example of like, oh, you know, the market's doing this or, you know, Amazon's doing this. So the market must be up. It doesn't necessarily have to be the case as we can see by not having a massive weight in the S&P. Uh, Meta, here's take a look at Meta stock, a beast. I mean, an absolute beast, massive gap up. It's essentially closed up here right at the highs that we saw back in April of last year, about a year ago. Meta, over the course of the past year, if you've been a Meta shareholder, if you were, if you have, if you just started looking at it or if you're just following along, I mean, the ups and the downs, down massive bounce back rally. Incredible. Jim Cramer, I believe him, was crying on CNBC, literally live TV back on the dump off of the earnings after the earnings in October. Ever since the tears were shed, maybe it fell off a little bit more, about 10 bucks. And then it's had a rally of, I think, over 150%. Let's see, from low to high. Yeah, over 150% on Meta, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. Google report earnings as well. And it uh, seems like didn't really have much of a reaction until today stayed strong, kind of looks like the NASDAQ almost. A uh, level to break here is around 109 to 110 on Google. You break that, you're looking a lot better. Uh, next thing to watch or next stock also I want to mention is Microsoft. And then we'll wrap up today's video. Microsoft massive gap up, had a, a little bit of a sell and then rip into earnings and then had a monstrous day here. Microsoft at the highest level it has been since April of 2022. So with that said, leave those tickers that you want us to cover in this weekend's video in the comment section down below. We're at an interesting spot. I mean, we've been talking about it for a while, but it just you guys can kind of see this like push and pull, push and pull. And we haven't really had the floodgates open in a bearish or bullish manner just yet. And so until that really happens, you can kind of see or what we should expect is some of this choppy, higher low or up and down kind of trending action that has more of a trend structure to it versus kind of an exponential rally or, you know, more of a, an exponential decline or a dump, as some will say. So that's kind of where we're at. Thanks so much for watching. The platform we're using here is TradingView. Go and check out TradingView and add Lux Algo indicators to TradingView's charts. That'll be linked up in the video description box down below. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.